YouTube coming at you with a canning video today on how I can premium pork sausage Jimmy Dean uh, so stay tuned please like and subscribe and ring that bell for me I appreciate it alright guys so this is how I start off um, for every 16 ounces of water I'll, I'll um, put two beef broth cubes in and I buy this stuff it's just it's not the name brand it's a Clover Valley brand whatever um, keep it as cheap as possible, you know what I'm saying? So, but if for every 16 ounces of water or two cups of water, you're going to add two of these cubes. But you're going to add these cubes after it starts boiling. So we're, we just add water like this, and as soon as I have as much as I think I need in here, I'll bring you back. Alright guys, so I got my water on. And I got. I also um, I neglected to mention last in the last uh, part of the video that I do. I put my lids, and I also start. I boil water and put those in there as well. Make sure they're all nice and uh, toasty, basically, so they form the best to the jars. I heard that you don't have to do that anymore, but I do. So you know, it's just something I got used to when I first started canning. Uh, I started canning probably about. Not too long I've been doing it, probably two and a half, three years now I've been doing this. And I actually really very much enjoy doing this stuff, but alright. Anyways, what I got going on here is uh, I got the water boiling here, got the lids boiling in there. Um, and then uh, if you're wondering what this is, is I, I, this is, I, uh, um, I go to Sam Cl Sam's Club and basically I buy like bulk of everything. And then I end up, I have my food saver and then I uh, end up uh, sealing, you know, in little, little portions basically and placing it in a freezer. So what I'm going to do with this bacon is I'm going to actually add a piece of bacon to each of my jars for that flavor, bacon flavor, with my sausage. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to wait for this water to start boiling, add the cubes, and then uh, I'll bring it back and we'll see exactly how I prepare it. Uh, I did um, pre-wash all my jars and stuff. There, there's no need to actually, um, you know, uh, disinfect it or anything like that because when I push it, put it in the pressure cooker, the pressure cooker actually, you know, kill all that bacteria and all that stuff. So, so all I did was just wash my jars and that was it. So, all right, I'll bring you back in a second here. All right, guys, so... This is my pressure canner, lids over there, but uh, this is my pressure canner and I'm going to put the water in it. Uh, I usually put a couple of these in. Where? Yeah, so basically I put two of these uh, pictures worth of water in there. Seems it's about right every time. So then I'll come over here and put a little bit of vinegar in there helps keep the inside clean and stuff and all that good stuff so all right guys so now our water is boiling so that's when we're going to add our cubes and i'll probably do most of these off camera but we just literally just take them out of the package and then toss them right in you can have a spoon stir it for a little bit and then you got yourself some beef broth one thing I did uh, forget to mention is that I did have extra beef broth last time. So what I did is just put it in a jar and kept it. So that'll be, that'll be used in this uh, batch right here. So there's no waste. There's no waste at all. All right, guys, I got all my cubes in now. I'm just going to stir this up. I turned down the heat a little bit. Still waiting for my lids to uh, boil up probably turn that up a little bit here but um, yeah I just stir this up right here and then you just kind of wait till those things that stuff dissolves stirring it a little bit at a time so um, we'll go back over to the other side and uh, we'll start preparing our jars all right guys so this is what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna take a piece of bacon for on for and put it in every jar one piece of bacon on every jar and again, this is just for flavoring. You know, adds a little flavor to that uh, tang sausage. And 
And again, this is the way I do it. Um, you don't have to add bacon, none of that stuff. I mean, you could use water instead of beef broth, even. But this is the way I do it. This is the way I like it. The way I think it tastes the best. So, so basically, we got a, our bacon in each jar, and I'm gonna actually whoa, dropping stuff over here. I'm actually gonna take this beef broth. See, it's sealed, sealed it. So. I'm just going to pour it in with this beef broth here, so that way that um, so that way it could be sealed, or I mean, <laughs> so that it could be warm when I go to put it in the jar. All right, now guys, <coughs> what we're going to do is this is the way I do it. Again, you don't have to do it this exact way, but. This is what I do. I'm just going to cut it up in half down the middle here. And I like to keep this thing on there so nothing gets around the rims. But we will wipe them down anyways and when we get, get done, just for, you know, just in casers, you know. I'm sure I'll make a little bit of a mess anyway. I just start putting putting this stuff in the jars. I put about a half of a roll. Do you think the I believe these are what is this? Like three pound rolls or something of uh, Jimmy Dean. And I usually put about a half of uh, half of one in each jar. So I've got, whoa, get slippery guys, get slippery. Got to try to do this quick because my uh, kids are going to be home from school soon. Kind of nice, actually the bus comes right to our uh, end of our driveway. Because they're the only kids that are picked up around this area, so it's pretty cool that they even come and pick up the kids and I don't want to drive them. Seeing that my closest neighbor is like, I don't know, two miles away or something like that. Three miles away. So, I basically just do this over and over again. Probably not be able to use all these jars, probably put up bacon in for no reason, but. I don't know, maybe I'll do a hamburger too, I don't know. I'll just pack it on in. And I, I try not to jam jam it in there either, because when I add the beef broth, you'll see why. Just enough for it to be pretty much in that uh, jar there. And uh, feel free to comment, guys. Let me know. Maybe I am doing something wrong. Maybe you guys can point that out to me. But it's it's I've been, like I said, I've been doing this three years now, and nothing's ever uh, tasted bad or went bad or anything like that. So I've had one of these jars sit probably about a year just to test it out. But I did end up eating it, obviously. It looks like we're gonna have one extra jar here. Right in the middle, right by.
Again, guys, these, this is good for, like, spaghettis and all that stuff. So I usually add these to, like, spaghettis and things of that nature. It is going to cook a bit, obviously, as it pressure cans. Like I said before, don't don't jam it in there too much, because you want that you want it to have a little air around that stuff. So when you go to put that in, it's a little bit easier. Alright guys, so yeah, we had one extra jar, no big deal. Looks like our uh, beef broth is done. It's kind of nice too because then it's, the jars are going to be already warm as you put them in the pressure canner by doing it this way too. But not way too warm, you know, so... That's a good part about do this, doing this. Okay, so I just take this, dunk it in, and I pour it right in. I put it in about an inch of head space, and then I'll do it again. This is why I didn't uh, jam it down. So I want that, all those juices to be able to get around all this meat, better flavoring for it and stuff. And you guys can use chicken broth or any kind of broth you guys would want. Or like I said, you could just use water. I've never canned it without liquid in it, so I don't know how that will go. I am still fairly new. That canning. Like I so like I said, if I'm do, making a mistake, let me know. Hopefully, I got enough beef broth here. Like I said, we'll wipe down the, all that. So looks like I might have to make a little bit more beef broth. You should see. Just make it. We have just enough, hopefully. So the next thing, guys, let me grab this. All right, so the next thing, guys, is I like to take a knife, just kind of put it around there, relieving it of any bubbles that could be in the bottom of this. Just put it around, and then it's okay to like kind of push it down if you want to make sure it stays under the the liquid. Let me move this back in real quick. Back over here. Like I said. See all the, I don't know if you can see it guys, but when I do this, see all the air bubbles coming up? That's what you want to make sure that's not in there. You want to try to make sure these air bubbles are all out. 
That's why I didn't just jam it in there. Otherwise it might go bad if you don't do that. And then I just push it down. Push it down. Probably just use this to do that too. You're just trying to get all the air you, uh, you can out of it so that it seals correctly. Just for things like spaghetti, I do pour the beef broth and stuff out. See all those air bubbles, tons of air bubbles coming out. I don't necessarily want too much in, too much in here because it will boil out of the lid as it pressure cans. All right, guys. So hold on a second. All right, guys. So the next step. I'm going to pour a little bit of this uh, vinegar into that bucket here, or bucket, into the bowl here, and take a little piece of uh, paper towel here, get it nice and square, dunk it in, a little bit of excess off, and all I'm going to do is wipe the top of my jars off like so. And you want to do this otherwise you're not going to be uh, getting a good seal on your jars so something might not seal and then you ended up wasting your time so you want to make sure you do this part this part's very important to do you do not want to forget to wipe the top of your uh, jars off so that way to make sure that these uh, lids seal you don't have to go through all this to, for nothing it takes too long to do to mess it up so crud on there so now we're going to take our little magnet and uh, our lids put them on each one Sometimes they stick together, make sure they're not stuck together.
Alright. A bit, then we're going to take our rings, guys. Just going to thread them on there, and that, real quick. Like we don't want to, we don't want to thread them on too hard. So this is about right, right here, just off where you can spin the jar with the lid. You don't, you don't need to crank these on there at all, because then it won't seal properly either. See, I don't know if you're, you're noticing this. But when I'm cranking them on, I just crank it on to where it starts spinning the jar. That's all you need. You don't, like I said, you don't need a really, really, really screw down there tight. Because then, obviously, the air is not going to be able to escape from inside the jar. And it's not going to seal properly. So, I usually just take the remainder of this and throw it in my pressure canner. Just a little extra to keep it clean inside of it. So now we're ready to go to my pressure canner, heat the water up a little bit, and um, stick them in there. So, all right, guys. So here we are. I am uh, doing this inside because it's a super windy day outside right now, and I'm, the flame is not able to hit that perfectly. Basically, so I do have. I know we're going to have some critics out there that says, oh, you shouldn't do that outside, or inside your house and stuff like that. But I got two big bay windows that open up behind the camera. So I do have a, tons of airflow right now and everything. So basically what I'm doing here is that I'm just going to wait until this water starts to boil and stuff like that. And then I'm going to place these jars, which is the reason why I used... Uh, uh, boiling brief broth and put them in these jars so that it's not a shock to these jars when I put them into the hot water. Um, so next time uh, you see me here I'll be placing the jars in the side of the pressure canner and show you kind of how I'm doing here. Alright guys so I'm, gonna, I'm up to about the temperature I want to be at uh, to pl start placing these jars in there and then close the lid so all I'm going to do is place the jars in there Okay, making sure that that uh, ring on the top is where we want it, not too loose, not too tight on each one as I place them in the, in the pressure canner. Okay. Then we're going to place the lid on it. Give it a little bit of push down, slide it. And then all we're going to do, turn this around real quick. So all we're going to do is just wait till this little nipple right here has a steady stream of uh, uh, steam coming right out of it. And then as soon as it starts steaming, I'll let you know. And when it starts steaming, you actually got you're supposed to let it for about 10 minutes uh, steam after for that, with a steady stream of steam after, at, right after it starts doing it. So basically, just time it. You know, 10 minutes after it starts streaming the steam out of the top, top of it, then you place your uh, your uh, weight on top of there. So right now we're just gonna wait, and I'll bring you back when we're uh, at that point. As you can see, guys, uh, we're now at that point where we're at about 11 PSI right now. So that's where I like it. That's where I usually keep it around for my uh, elevation. So um, basically, uh, at this point, you would set a timer for about um, 90 minutes. And as soon as that timer goes off, as long as you stay in the uh, zone that you want, you can go anywhere from 10 to 15 PSI. It's going to bounce back and forth but as long as you're in the zone of 10 to 15 psi you'll be all right don't have to get nervous nothing like that so um i'm going to keep it in the zone the best as i can and i'll come back at you come back when i uh, start to pull these uh jars out of there all 
All right, guys, it's that time. All we're gonna do now is turn off the heat completely, and we're not gonna touch this thing until that thing gets to zero and that little knob right there falls. Make sure while that, you know, you're waiting just to get your, you know, uh, little grabbers here to take your jars out. So, but that's it. Uh, we're just, all we're doing is waiting for this little nipple to go down. We do not want to take off the, um, the weight yet at all. All right, guys, so as you can see, the pressure is all the way down now at zero, so it's now good to take off your weight. And uh, open your lid here. The important part is you want to open the lid away from you because there could be a lot of steam that rolls out of there into your face and, you know, doesn't feel too pleasant. So then we just take our uh, jars out. And I see that these are already sealed as it is already. And I'm just going to go throw them in on uh, the cutting board. One at a time. You want to have one of these grabbers because these things are super hot. Got to be careful you don't do this with it and all that stuff too because that could ruin the seal. You don't want to get any of that liquid on that seal right now. And then after I get all these in, I will show you my next this little step that I do but as you can see this is what it looks like right when it comes out it's super steamy and hot all right and then you'll see me in a second here all right guys so this is the jars after it comes out I don't know how great you could see that or not, but uh, that's what they look like. It looks like they're mostly sealed already. As you can see, they're not popping. They're all like sealed, I believe, already, so that's good news. But the next step I do, because I don't want this to cool down too quick, is I cover it with a towel. That way I can ensure that this thing, these things kind of cool down at a slower rate to make sure that it gets uh, the optimal seal so basically I just cover them like that and you know insulate them from getting too cold too fast and uh, sometimes like when it's really cold out or whatever oh that dang cat dang cat just uh, <laughs> tipped over the cans Grr. And scared himself but anyway uh so yeah that's it guys and uh that's how you that's how i uh can jimmy dean's honey sausage so if you guys can like and subscribe i'd be very appreciative of that uh sorry if you hear kids in the background but uh all three of my kids got home before i could end this video so uh, i apologize if you hear screaming but uh like I said, if you can like, subscribe, ring that bell so you can uh, see my future videos, uh, it'd be much appreciated. Thanks, guys.